Welcome into College Football Smothered and Covered. My name is Barrett Salee. I appreciate you guys checking out the show. If this is your first time, I urge you to go back. Look at the YouTube page. We've got a great mix of stuff on there, whether it be yesterday's interview with Joey Jones, the Marine, former Marine bomb tech. We've got coaches interviews, Shane Beamer, Rhett Lashley. Got a bunch to choose from there. Also on YouTube, there is an exclusive video section where you can see some of the fun sideline videos that I've captured over the course of my career, including a great shot of second and 26, as well as Brock Bauer's game-winning touchdown against Auburn on the Plains last year. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a review, all of those things. If you like the show, please let us know why. Spread the word. If you don't like it, hey, you know what? Negative review, totally cool as well. Love to see what you guys dislike about the show so the crew here at College Football Smothered and Covered can tailor it to the need of the college football fan. And speaking of college football fan, that's you. And you know what? You deserve the best college football content that you can have on the new media ecosystem so i urge you go subscribe go listen go watch to everybody on the believe network go listen go watch go subscribe to everybody else like late kick like andy staples on three all those guys do it college football is 24 7 365 and sometimes you're not going to like what i say sometimes you are going to like what i say that's cool get all the content you possibly can because you deserve it because you don't want to hear stupid nba arguments you just don't i know you don't yes you looking at you I apologize for the late start to today's show. Uh, my son has been having some elbow in, uh, issues. My 12-year-old took him to the orthopedist today. Luckily, not a big deal. Just need to rest it for a little bit before we head to Cooperstown to the big tournament up there in mid-June. So apologize for that, plus some uh, some issues in terms of health. Not anything bad, just felt like crap today, man. So we got a late start to the show today. Hey, reminder, this show brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all summer sports this season, whether it be Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL playoffs, golf, and more. Get all the latest stats, news, and scores available for your favorite teams right there at Bet Online. Get the latest odds and lines, team matchups, player props, all that stuff. Head to the website today, betonline.ag, or pull it up on your mobile browser. Bet Online, where the game starts don't forget you love college football you love apparel that means you can go get this great t-shirt from colorado from breaking tea culture you can judge for yourself what culture means at colorado but it's there go to breaking tea.com slash smothered and covered breaking tea.com slash smothered and covered you can get this guy you can get anything for your team as well breaking tea they specialize in wearing the moment so if something viral happens something that everybody's talking about on the internet, bam, an hour later, it is up on Breaking Tea. So I'm going to call this show the Get Angry Show because it is time for the post-spring top 25. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen it because I put it up just a moment ago, but it is time for the top 25, at least my top 25 in college football after spring practice. We're going to go through all of them, but if you're only listening, I'm just going to run through them real quick. We're, we're, we're going to go through all of them. We're not going to have an analysis on all of them, but we're going to go through all of them. So here we go. Number one, Georgia. Number two, Ohio State. Number three, Texas. Number four, Ole Miss. Number five, Oregon. Number six, Michigan. Number seven, Alabama. Number eight, Notre Dame. Number nine, Utah. Number 10, Clemson. Number 11, Florida State. Number 12, LSU. Number 13, Oklahoma State. Number 14, Kansas State. Number 15 is West Virginia. Tennessee in at number 16. Number 17 is the Missouri Tigers. Number 18, Penn State. Louisville at number 19, Penn State 20, 21 is, number, is Virginia Tech, Miami at 22, Arizona at 23, SMU at 24, and Texas A&M at 25. So I know your team is underrated. Even if you're Georgia and you're number one, you're probably still mad that they're not higher. Like the gap between them on the graphic is not bigger. But look, it's so hard to judge the top 25 teams, even now, because we've had so much player movement, right? So, but we all have to have them. We all have to have them because that's our jobs. And that's why you see 
magazines come out later. Preview magazines were already hitting the shelves 10 years ago. Now we're just trying to figure out exactly who's on what roster. So this is obviously subject to many, many changes because there are a lot of guys who aren't even committed that are in the transfer portal. There are team players that aren't even on campus yet. But so this is subject to change after change after change. But May 8th, 407 Eastern time. That's when I have this top 25. So we'll go through Georgia over Ohio State. And I kind of was back and forth on this. Now, Ohio State fans got furious with me after I released my top, my pre, my post-2023 college football playoff prediction for the 12-team playoff because I didn't have Ohio State in it. Well, they didn't have Quinshawn Juckins. They didn't have Caleb Downs. They didn't have a lot of these dudes that transferred. Now, you look at all of this stuff combined with the players who stuck around like Abuka and some of these other guys on defense, that to me is a perfect storm for Ohio State. And that's why I considered them at number one. Didn't put them there because I'm not necessarily sold on Will Howard. But you always have to look at the teams that have that hashtag unfinished business, right? Where they have seniors or players who are draft eligible decide to come back because it matters. Winning a national championship matters. We saw this with Clemson going into the 2018 season with that defensive line, Christian Wilkins and that crew. We saw this with Georgia going into the 2021 season with Jordan Davis and those guys. We saw this with Florida State last year with Jordan Travis and Jared Verse and all those guys. Now, granted, Florida State did not win a national championship, but... Had Jordan Travis not gotten hurt, they absolutely would have made the playoff and we never know. But they won every game, right? They did everything that they should have done and could have done. So you throw them in the mix too. And Ohio State's got that attitude. They've got that attitude. I love the running back core. Now, I think Travion's better than Quinshawn, but you put them together. Woo, buddy. That is, that is a dangerous, dangerous backfield. The reason I don't have Ohio State over Georgia is because of the quarterback position. And those of you who have listened to and watched this show since the 2.0 edition came out in February, you already know that I'm not the biggest Will Howard guy. I think if Ryan Day starts one of the young guys or even Devin Brown, that they can win a national championship. I don't think they can do it with Will Howard. I don't think he's a competent starting quarterback. He was not going to start at Kansas State. So that unknown was why I was reluctant and didn't put Ohio State number one over Georgia. And I've seen some people, they actually have Ohio State over Georgia, which, I mean, honestly, um, if you're a Will Howard person, fine. If you are, and putting them at number one, I think makes a ton of sense. If, if you believe that, and if you believe that I'm wrong, fine. But Georgia at number one, I, you know, it's, there, I don't want to get too deep into analysis because there really isn't anything to analyze. Georgia, deep, talented, good, experienced. That's it. Carson Beck, I think, will take a massive step forward this year. Now that he's got a full offseason as the starting quarter, which he kind of had the full offseason last year. He technically wasn't the starting quarterback, but... He got the majority of the first team snaps anyway. So that's why Georgia over Ohio State. We'll spin it down to number four, and that is Ole Miss. I know some people will say, Ole Miss, oh, you're hopping on the bandwagon again. Hopping on that Ole Miss bandwagon again because I tend to do that. And Yes, I have been burned by Ole Miss in the past. I don't think I will be burned by Ole Miss this year. Look at that hashtag unfinished business thing, right? Ole Miss has got a little bit of that swagger to him as well whether it be Jackson Dart or Walker outside. They get Walter Nolan along the defensive front. They've got edge rushers. They've got a really good one-two punch at running back, even without Quinshawn Judkins. And they've got Lane Kiffin. And all of that combined leads me to say that it's a perfect mix of today's philosophy, how you win in today's college football world. And that is, that defense doesn't win championships. Just enough defense wins championships. And that is a moving target based on your personnel, your philosophy, your coach on both sides of the ball, your opponent on any given week. USC is way far beyond that. 
Ole Miss has it right because they can move up and down the field offensively and they can create havoc in the backfield. And I think they'll do more of that with a bigger, faster, more physical defensive line. We can we know they've been able to create havoc without some of these dudes. Now you get a little, just a little, little more stout up front in the middle of that defensive line. It'll go a long way. So that's why Ole Miss, I think, is going to be really good at number four. Let's go down to Alabama at seven. It's really hard to choose where Alabama will be. I think Jalen Milrow can be fine in this offense. But if Kalen DeBoer is going to ask him to drop back seven-step drops, five-step drops consistently, things are not going to go great. You look at Jalen Milrow's sack-to-pressure ratio last year. It's like he's on an island way, way below everybody else. That's going to have to change. That's the one thing that that really cost Alabama last year at times. Cost them the Texas game. Hurt them in the South Florida game. Obviously hurt them in the Michigan game. The offensive line wasn't that good. That didn't help. New face, Kalen DeBoer, new coaching staff. Maybe that changes too. Maybe that helps. I don't know. But we do know that Alabama's talent is awesome across the board. Depth, maybe not there as it has been in years past. But I think we all know what to expect from Alabama. I think they're number seven this year. But... If you want to put them higher, that's fine. You could make an argument that they might be, be you know, a, a fringe top 10 team right now because you don't know what you're getting from Kalen DeBoer. Totally on board with that argument, too. Split the difference. Put them at seven, right? Clemson at 10. I've seen a lot of these top 25s, and Clemson's just sort of thrown all over, right? This is not a prediction of where things will end. It's just where they are right now. And... Right now, I look at Clemson. No, they did not get a single transfer player in the spring window. Why? Why? Is it because of Dabo's philosophy? Or is it because they don't need any? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. But what I do know is they've got a loaded running back room led by Mafa. I think the experience that they had last year cutting their teeth with Cade Klubnick and that offense will pay off this year, whether it's Cade taking the snaps or not. And if it is Cade, then you know you're going to at least be competitive. I think defensively, front to back, they are solid. And I think right now you have to view them a little like we viewed Georgia in the Mark Richt era. And I know that might sound like it's an insult to Clemson. And sure, it's not what it used to be at Clemson. But it's still one of those things where, okay, 9, 10 wins. Yeah, that's where they are. That's cool. Bad year. Top 10 team. Fringe top 10 team. They've got the talent. We know they've got the talent. We know they can do it. We've seen them do it. So I think this idea that that Clemson has just fallen off the map, I mean, when rock bottom is what they had last year, the experience they gained and the personnel that were that they had on that roster that stuck around will be able to take a small step forward. And if they take a small step forward, they're a top 10 team. They're a top 10 team. So I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Oklahoma State at 13. Oklahoma State at 13. You guys saw my way, 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 way too early college football playoff 12-team predictions when I was still at CBS back in January. I had Oklahoma State number four. What? 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 Oklahoma State number four. Well, yeah. I have Oklahoma State as a top 15 team. Now I have Utah as a better Big 12 team right now. Why? Because Cam Rising seems like he's okay. That was the sort of the, the thing you have to look at. Say, okay, what's Cam Rising going to be? But Oklahoma State's still going to compete with the big for, with Utah for the Big 12 championship. I think those two will match up in that game. And the winner will get a top four seed. 
And you look at Oklahoma State, they've got all the makings of a team, a Mike Gundy team that can make a run. Loaded with experience on the offensive line, all over the place. Maybe the best running back in the country with Ollie. Experience at quarterback. Returning power on the defensive side of the ball all over the place. And for whatever reason, Mike Gundy in, in our business is kind of viewed, he's kind of a, a polarizing figure. I don't get it. But what I do get is that he's still a damn good coach. And when you've got all of this mixed together, when you've got the ability to run the dang ball over and over and over again, and you have a quarterback who's not going to make mistakes, you're going to do all right. So top 15, absolutely. If Oklahoma State is not in somebody's top 15, then you need to question that person's sanity. Because that team has all of the makings of a Mike Gundy special. All right, moving it down to West Virginia at number 15. I'm talking about West Virginia a little bit in this because my uh, my good friend Mark Bowman of MLB.com who covers the Braves, that's all we talk about in the press box is West Virginia football. We had Neil Brown on the show. Neil Brown does a great job. But you look at their offensive line, players everywhere. Garrett Green, probably the best quarterback you've never heard of. And I think that defense will take another step forward. They're, uh, they've simplified things. They've been working on on, on fundamentals this, this offseason, and I think that'll pay off big time. So just wanted to mention West Virginia because – Mark Bowman, I know you watch this show all the time. And next time I see you in the Truist Park uh, press box, I know you're going to ask me about it. All right, moving down. Why Missouri at number 17? A lot of people have Missouri higher than that. A little higher. I mean, they went to a New Year's Six Bowl last year, and, and they were great. And, and Eli's done a great job. Brady Cook is there. Luther Burden is there. Awesome. Trader's not. That's the thing is, okay, what made everything click? What made everything click? To me, I think it's too much to ask for there not to be a little bit more significant drop-off at Missouri. If it was another school that had a little bit more depth and versatility on the offensive side of the ball, okay, maybe you can say, okay, a small step back really doesn't mean an awful lot in terms of, of where they are going into the season. I don't think Missouri's there yet. With that said, being preseason top 25 for Missouri, throw the confetti. There's a huge compliment to Eli Drinkwitz. Even if they're in the back end of somebody's top 25, they're in everybody's top 25 somewhere. So if you have some level of consistency at Missouri, you deserve a raise, you deserve an extension, and you deserve everything else that's coming to Eli Drinkwitz. I, I think Missouri's pretty good. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Are they a playoff caliber team? Probably not. Okay, Penn State at 18. What's with the Drew Aller love? I mean, did I miss something? What's with the Drew Aller love? He struggled in the spring game when they blew the whistle when anybody was within the same zip code. He couldn't complete a long pass to save his life last year. Is he going to take a step forward? Why? Why? Where? Why? Tell me how. Tell me why. Tell me why. I want to know. Anybody? Anybody in the comments? Bueller? No? Nothing? I've seen some top 25s that have Penn State in the top 10. And I'm kind of scratching my head saying, why? Like, what? what's the reason for that? And... I guess it's knee-jerk reaction. I guess it's this idea that James Franklin is a an elite coach. He's good. But does he deserve the top 10 benefit of the doubt? I don't think so. 
especially with a quarterback who has not proven that he is anything close to what we thought he would be. So Penn State fans probably get mad at me. Kevin McGuire, if you're watching, formerly of college football talk, I apologize. Nishan Gandhi, I apologize. But you can still book, book travel with my wife. Disney trips. All right, before we get out of here, we'll go 24 and 25. SMU at 24 and Texas A&M at 25. All right, we'll start on we'll start the back end. Texas A&M at 25. Who is Connor Wegman? Who is Connor Wegman? I, that's a very simple question with a very complicated answer. Ultra-talented kid injured. What is his 100%? Is his 100% what it was going to be? Or did that drop down after a couple of seasons? Even if it's a little bit. But if he's what he's cracked up to be with that receiving core, Texas A&M is going to be good. And know what you're going to say. Oh, God, here we go with the Texas A&M love. Texas A&M winning the offseason. No, I have him at 25. And ask any Texas A&M fan. They hate me. They hate me because I was down on Jimbo Fisher every single season. I was right, by the way. But there is still talent there. I know there's been an exodus of players after Jimbo's NIL fiasco, but they still have players there, and they've got a quarterback who, if right, can be a top-tier player. Plus, we don't know what Mike Elko is going to be. We've have, we have two years at Duke. So is it okay to kind of just scratch your head and... Say, eh, we'll see. We'll see. That's, that's responsible. It's very responsible. So that's why I have Texas A&M at 25, one spot behind SMU. Go back in and watch or listen to the Rhett Lashley episode of this show. I think it was about two, three weeks ago we had Rhett on, and he is one of the most underrated coaches in the country. But pay special attention to what he said about Preston Stone. And if you don't know Preston Stone, get to know Preston Stone. One of the best quarterbacks in all of college football. He is a guy, when healthy and if healthy, he suffered an injury toward the end of last season. But Rhett says he's back. They've got weapons all over the place. And they're in an ACC where, you know what? You're still probably going in as a top three, top four team right this very second. So I'm excited to see what SMU can do. I mean, there are, and look, I, I don't want to name names because like I'm friends with these people, right? There are people in this business that don't have SMU, like a lot of people that don't have them in their top 25. In fact, I don't really know of anybody that has SMU in the top 25. You should. You should. Because that's a nine-win football team. That is a nine-win football team. If Preston Stone is back and Preston Stone is near 100% and talking to Rhett, Sounds like that will be the case. That will do it for this edition of College Football Smothered and Covered, brought to you by Bet Online. Make sure you go to betonline.ag. Get your player props, get your bets, all that stuff. Go to Bet Online. Mobile device web, betonline.ag, where the game starts. Apologize for the late show today. Like I said, lots of personal stuff, whatever. But share the show. You already know how to get podcasts, whether you're, whether you're watching on YouTube or Rumble or Apple or Spotify or wherever. You know how to get this show. Your neighbor, your friend, your uncle, your dad, your mom, they might not. So make sure you share this show with them. Tell them to write a review. You write a review. Tell them to give us five star. Tell Why don't you give us a one, five star or a one star? Whatever. But you deserve the best college football coverage in the new media world in the offseason. And... I think the crew here at College Football Smothered and Covered do all of all we can to make that happen. I know everybody else does across the Believe Network and everywhere else as well. So make sure you go check those guys out. Until next time, have a great day, everybody. Mm-hmm.